Flatsoid is one of those flat earthers that keeps on repeating the same nonsense about celestial navigation over and over again. Now Flatsoid thinks that he debunked Geronism's explanation why celestial navigation perfectly is possible on a globe earth. Let's hear what Geronism says about it. And then if we lived on a curved earth instead, well, he still takes the same angle measurement to the star. He just uses a tangent, which is a fictional thing. It's a fictional line that is just imaginary. But it can be used if you just say, okay, where I'm at, I'm just gonna draw a line straight out and then that's my line. And it's the same angle to the star. Sounds perfectly reasonable, doesn't it? Now Flatsoid's attempt, which comes down to this butchering of what celestial navigation is. He makes so many mistakes that it's hard to know where to begin. First of all the horizon, he states this. Oh boy, not a good start. It's not the same angle to the star. First of all, if you know how a sextant works, it can only work of having a horizontal baseline. If you also notice that they use the horizon to set this horizontal. This is either a mistake or a blatant lie. It most certainly isn't true. The horizon always lies lower than the observer, so the line observer horizon can never be lying in a horizontal plane. Flatsoid seems to never have heard of a thing called dip correction. And if he does, he doesn't understand how it works. All flat earthers think, following quantum eraser and others, that dip correction just displaces your so-called horizontal plane downwards to the flat plane that is the flat earth. No one in the flat earth community is able to explain how this is supposed to work. The dip angle is subtracted from the measured elevation angle. This is a table for dip correction. Notice that it shows the observer height, the dip correction in degrees and the distance to the horizon. If you apply these numbers to a flat earth, the horizon for an observer height of 0.3 meters, that is one foot, and the dip correction of one arc minute, that is 0.167 degree, would be at 103 meters whereas the table says 1.2 nautical mile, that is 2222 meters. This in itself obliterates the whole black swan nonsense. On top of that, there is no flat earther who ever has explained how you get the crisp horizon in the first place. And in the absence of any understanding of how refraction works, they are not the designated persons to question the horizon at all let alone play those silly word games where they use the word apparent in the meaning of non-existent, not real, a meaning that is the only non-existent thing in this case. Then he goes on making his next blunder. Okay, Jaren, let's see if we can make this uh, very easy for you to understand. It would not be the same. You know why that would be? Look at the GP of the star. Look at the GP of the person taking the observation. First of all, they would need to be on the same plane of observation. In other words, the azimuthal plane has to be exactly the same. If he measured that star with a distance of 3,000 miles away, that means that horizontal plane is 3,000 miles long. He draws a tangent line to a ball, something he denies exists, draws the GP to the star both on that tangent line and on the globe, the latter being in the wrong position, and names a distance to the GP without saying how you get at that, to that distance. Because no flat earther ever has explained it, and they never will because they can't. He tried himself in a discussion with Mr. Sensible to claim that the 60 nautical miles per degree would do the trick and proved it by saying that the distances on an arc are the same for every 10 degrees of angle difference, and you measure the angle along an arc on a sextant. So, he then says this. Straighten that curve out now of that, of that uh, index arm arc, 
what happens when you straight it out? Will that give what you're seeing now on the bottom with that flat? Not having the same uh, linear distances anymore. I've if you not, had to straighten I, that curve out. I let that sink in slowly. Very slowly. Then, at last, he draws the GP on the globe correctly and says this. Let's put that GP of that star on a globe, shall we? Oh, wow. A different zenith compared to the person, so a different angular reading. This is what you get when you let a toddler play with a razor blade. What a mess you get. At 5000 kilometers, the angle indeed is way off, but at the distance of the star of 2.5 million kilometers, the angle is only 0.05 degrees or only 0.2% off. The angle to Polaris would be around 0.0000000017 degrees or 0 0.0000000004 percent off. It's hard watching this drivel and to not shout at your screen, the star is very far away you clown. You cannot paint your premise of nearby stars on the globe model which has stars millions of miles away. You could say Flatsoid is a liar. But looking at his facial expression, it would be more accurate to say that he is thick as a brick, that he is a few cans short of a six-pack, in short, that he is very, very stupid. Or would it be the influence of Nathan Oakley, who also puts his two cents in? Could be. He pinned Oakley's comment and supported him wholeheartedly. This doesn't only make him as stupid as a bat, it also makes him someone who believes in the fairy tales of a snake oil peddler. I don't know what's worse. 